hello everyone. Very nice to meet you today. So thank you, Cha Yong, for giving us this opportunity to share the cap capability of Eurofins discovery. And today our topic will focus on the safety pharmacology portfolio of Eurofins discovery services. So I'm Jun Yao Li from Taiwan. So now I'm the lab director of molecular pharmacology department in Taipei site. So I will I will show you the safety pharmacology portfolio for the whole Eurofins business unit. Okay, so before the meeting, I just like to give you a short idea like how Eurofins works and also for each size capabilities. So I'm from Taipei as you know. So in Taipei side, our brain is 10 labs. So we provide different kinds of in, in vitro off targets, therapeutic based portfolio, and like many binding enzymatic cell based and SPR based binding assays. And also we have in vivo capability like a DMPK or some disease animal models. And also in the US, we have a different site from Sanchuras, Fremont, and San Diego. They provide different kinds of cell based or phen phenotypic assays and also some GPCR services. And in France, UK, and Spain, our European site, they also provide some profiling and some protein products and even so some medical medicinal chemistry and chemical synthesis capabilities. So in Eurofins, we are a big family and each side we support each other and we have covered all the territory of different capabilities of, capabilities of different cap therapeutic areas. So that could provide you the overall whole service for as a package. Okay, so for today's presentation, this is the outline. So I will introduce you how we provide the safety pharmacological services and how this kind of service could help you for your drug discovery. So I'll give some overview on safety pharmacology. So this is a science on detecting adverse effect liability or predict potential risk and counting safety margin for medicine. So this field is very important during drug discovery, especially for the early phase. And later I will introduce you some case study by our safety screen panel. So how client use our panel to evaluate their drug and adverse effect and risks. And later on, we'll go through different fields like CNS safety, so including drug abuse and seizure liability and cardiovascular safety, so-called CPA related to arrhythmia, and then cardiogenesis safety. And in the end, also we'll show some in vivo capabilities in our site. So let's start from the safety pharmacology overview. So I think many people already you know the definition of safety pharmacology or we call secondary pharmacology profiling. So when we have a compound, a drug, or a pro-drug, or even its metabolites, we are aiming this drug to, we are hoping this drug to have a hit, to hit our intense, intensive targets, like we decide the drug to hit a GPCR or hit a certain enzyme to have their pharmacological effects. So this is our purpose. But during the discovery, sometimes we find the drug is not only hit, hitting our primary target, but they have some off targets hitting, or we call this a secondary effect, secondary hitting. So that will cause some problems or some raise some issues to us because this is unintentional hitting. So we have to think about if this secondary effect is beneficial, neutral or deleterious. For safety pharmacology field, the mostly we are worried about or well, we have some concern about the safety or further risk, potential risk. So we are thinking maybe the on purpose targets will be harmful. But sometimes this could be beneficial to reveal a new window of vision to our compound. So it depends. But then most of the on, on purpose hits could produce some concerns. So we need to evaluate what is the off target and how we can adjust on this issue and how we can further modify our chemical structure to avoid the secondary effects. Because this kind of secondary effect, if this is harmful, maybe they can produce some potential risk like adverse effects or get some harmful to the cell or to the whole body and maybe will induce a termination of the whole project. So in the early phase, we really need to think about the secondary effect to define if it's a harmful or it's uh, neutral. And 
later on to design our drug accordingly. So from the guidance we know, <clears throat> the FDA guidance, we know the safety pharmacology study, the main concern will be about our core battery system. So what is the core battery system? So called is our central nerve system, cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal system, renal system, respiratory system. That's, these systems are very important to our vital signs and our normal physiological functions. So if uh, we have uh, some secondary effect which will affect our core battery system, that will pro pro probably produce some high risk harmful effect, but we really need to assess the risk factor in the future. So if any compound they have uh, the secondary effect and related to the core system, that will be very cautious and we really need to pay attention. So in the right side, you can see, sorry. Yeah, in the right side, you can see, according to the instance and the impacts, we have a four different area to the risk label. So, and also from different color, we can see different field like cardiovascular, neuron, respiratory, renal, and GI. So we have uh, some secondary effect or, or adverse effect. They have low instance, and low impact, so that would be less, maybe that maybe just cause some minor effect, or they have a high incidence but low inf impact. So something like if we take some medicine, we have some comfortable in our GI function, or we feel like no share of eating, or we have change of our heart, heart rate and blood pressure, but they are not lethal. But for some adverse effects, so you we can see here we have they they have a high impact. Like they have uh, some retinal dysfunction, they have a neuropathy, or they are less to the seizure or uh, drug abuse liability. And that will be cause some high impact. And even more, we have a high incidence and high impact like a QT prolonged and proarrhythmic effects. That will really cause some high risk for this drug di discovery. So this kind of effect we should really take, consider take into consideration and evaluate this very seriously. So according to the guidance, this is the journey of the drug discovery. So we have a safety guidance, ICH7, <coughs> S7A, and we have a different category, like we have our primary therapeutic targets, our primary effects. Like this is our primary hit, we, we like to have the therapeutic effects. So we'll do some biochemical, functional, or even phenotypic assays and later on to finalize our study to understand the mechanism and how it shows its effect in the different therapeutic areas. But meanwhile, we'll have some secondary pharmacology or we say the off-target profiling. So we'll use a lot of like biochemical or functional tests that we screen a lot of different molecular targets and to find, for example, some, some researchers, they will do some safety screening, herc channel binding or a evaluate the abuse, drug abuse potential to understand how the secondary effects or the off targets will make some further effect in, during the discovery. And after that, we have some safety pharmacology, in vivo safety pharmacology. So we use animal models really to evaluate the safety issues or concerns on the real animals. So either we can do the safety or toxicology in non-GOP or GFP required studies and to finalize the whole journey of safety pharmacology study. And during this, <clears throat> this process, in vitro system is a, plays a very important part because it's uh, fast and cost effective and can really cover and include a lot of uh, different molecular targets by biochemical, biochemistry or functional assays. So even cover like a lot of uh, tissues, cells, organelles, or even on the molecular level, like receptors, ion channels, transporters, and enzymes. So in vivo study plays a very important part during this journey and help us to identify the targets. So here I want to just show you some industrial practice of safety pharmacology. So in the right one, you can see the very famous paper published in 2012 in Natural Drug Discovery. 
So this paper is contributed by four very famous pharma from AstraZeneca, Novartis, GSK, and Pfizer. So their scientists and their research team defined 44 very potential targets they, pro they probably do, can produce a high risk in after adverse effects during drug discovery. So they figure out this 44 target will be important and at, at a very early stage, people, researchers should uh, pay more attention on these targets because they will be, they are related to the co-battery system and may produce some higher risk and adverse effects. So in our safety panel, we include these 44 assays, uh, 44 targets as our safety panel. And later I can show you how we use this panel to do our case study and how this will help you to identify your off-targeted and secondary pharmacology. So in this paper, it's also mentioned about some early terminate projects and drug candidates from different periods, like to, um, from two, 2004 to two, 2010. And also they include some clinical candidate discontinued and some withdrawal drugs. So do, um, according to this profile, people can find that if your compounds with higher promiscuous rate, meaning a high target hit rate, meaning like you have more secondary targets, and that will be more possible your compound or your project will be discontinued, or even the compound already pushed to the market, there will, there will be some risk of a withdrawal. So you can see the current clinical candidate is continue and with your drugs, they have a really high hit, hit rate of uh, secondary target. So later I will explain you how we approach this by our case study. And another research from 2018 saying about uh, usually the farmers, how they leverage the resources from CRO and how CRO plays an important role in industrial practice of in vitro off target. So they made a survey on 21 scientific experts from different farmers or industries and how they have their data and how can they approach their studies. So you, you can see most of the farmers and experts, they use both way like hybrid approach. They have internal capabilities, but also they use CRO to help them to, pro, to do the off-target profiling and mainly on a lot of small molecules and also probably some large molecules as well. So it's very rare a pharma or a biotech they use their own internal capabilities to approach the off-target profile. Usually they can leverage the resource from CROs because in CRO we have built up a lot of different molecular targets. We can cover a very wide range of targets and provide different kinds of from biochemical to functional, even phenotypic assays. And from internal resources, sometimes it's not enough to really have all the, like all the experiments or all assays by their own. So very often, farmers, they will use CROs to complete at this early stage of target profiling for their drug candidates. Okay, so next one, I'm, I'm going to show you how we use our safety screen panel case study with an already marketed drug and how we can find the result and how we interpret the result with already known the secondary side effects. Okay, as we know from in the discovery journey, we have a different stages. So we have, a, when we have a compound or we have a candidate and we need to find a hit. And then we have go through the whole journey, like here to lead, lead optimization and candidate selection. And during this journey, we need to identify the potential hazards. And maybe later on during the structural modification or SAR, and we can eliminate our hazards and later on do a lot of functional assays to understanding the mechanisms. So our safety panel will cover different territories and provide a lot of uh, different choice to our clients. So firstly, we have a tier one, two, three. So the one, two, three, they cover different numbers of targets. So the tier one, as we mentioned, the 44 main target proposed by farmers. So we have the first stage tier one safety panel, so safety 44. So they cover the all suggested targets provided by the farmers. 
and if Ukrainians they have some concern, they want to step forward their first step to the safety pharmacology, they will start from the tier one safety 44. But sometimes our Ukrainians they have more concerns or they think about, I want to know more about the, if I have other off targets except from the 44. So we have a tier two safety for 87. So they cover even more GPCR and enzymes to provide a better view if you have uh, other off target. And we have also tier three, so it's like spectrum screen. So some clients, they are very strict and very careful about, they want to exclude all the possibilities on the off target. So they will do the spectrum screen panel. So we have more than 160 targets. So it's kind of really overall screening to understand and also to exclude the other potential off target, even they are not very often. But to be careful, some clients, they want to see everything. So we can also provide a tier three spectrum screen panel. So coming back to the safety pharmacology. So in this, in this case study, we pick up our typical safety screen and ADR enzyme screening to approach our case study. So here in our adverse reaction enzyme panel, so we have a 30 known kinases, including cytochrome P, protease, PDE, NOS, and so on. And also 21 kinases like chem kinase, MAP kinase, and tyrosine kinase families. And also we include our safety 44 and 87. So actually our set 87, they cover all the target in 44. So, <clears throat> so some currently they just order 87, that will be enough to cover all the 44 target proposed by the big farmers. So in the safety screening panel, so we have uh, enzymes, GPCR, ion channels, transporters, and NHR. So overall, we, we screen like 139 total targets to figure out the compound if they have a off-target effect. So let's go to the next one. So in, the case, in this case study, we pick up the compound of pyramide, so-called emoting. So this is a very old drug approved in 1976. The indication is to anti-diarrhea. So I think many of us already, we experienced diarrhea and sometimes doctor just gave us the emoting to stop the diarrhea. So the primary target of the pyramide is on the opioid receptors, including mu, delta, and kappa receptors as an agonist. But in 2016, the FDA just announced an alert saying that lopiramide pro may probably cause some heart problems. So during this the market period, already 48 cases have been reported with uh, serious heart problems associated with the use of lopiramide. So by, case, by this case study, we would like to put this compound lopiramide to our safety panel to see what we have and how we can interpret the data. So as mentioned, we include overall total 139 ADR associated targets in, included by our adverse ADR enzyme panel and safety screen panels. So for each target, we can classify them into different areas like CNS, CV, endocrine, GI, immune, oncology, respiratory, and so on the others. So we can know each target is related to different areas or some targets they are overlapping or they share by different systems. And we, we, we use this compound as 10 micromore as testing concentration. And if the inhibition rate over 50%, we define it's a hit. So under this definition, we start our safety screen panel and we see what is the readout. So this is the result, heat map of the result we can see here. So first, first of all, we can see lopiramide indeed, they have a very high heat on the opioid receptors, including delta, kappa, and mu receptors. This is very consistent, consistent with our already known knowledge. But meanwhile, we've also find the other target is including alpha, beta receptors, herb channel, sodium channel, calcium channel, and dopamine receptors. So that's recent issue. Right? Why we have other off targets and how this off target works. So later on, we just perform some functional assay by cell based platform. 
So by the our functional cell basis, we can identify if this hit because we have a binding data. So we know, okay, they, they will bind to these receptors. And after then, by cell basis, we can identify if they are agonists or antagonists, and also to measure the IC50 on the cell base platform. So in, con in conclusion, we just find lopiramide is not, not only an agonist of opioid receptors, but also they are weak antagonists against alpha-1b, alpha-1d, d3, and calcium 1.2. So this is very useful information. So we already know lopiramide works on opioid receptor, but now we all know the off-targets will be from the other receptors. And when we compare to the different therapeutic, area, uh, sorry, different areas of the related risk, so we can compare. So by this figure, you can see on targets, we have opioid receptors. So, so the indication is like acute and chronic diarrhea. But according to different receptors or ion channels, we find like this alpha receptor, dopamine receptor, calcium channel, beta receptor, serotonin receptor, and herb and sodium channels. They are related to two different cardiovascular adverse events like hypertension or arrhythmia, heart failure, cardiac arrest, or some cardiac stress, or even some thrombosis and arrhythmia, especially for herb channel. This is very important. So according to this data, we already know that, okay, we have a good indication like an anti-arrhythmic effect of lopiramide. But the other off-target could explain the phenomenon already we observed from the side effects. They have uh, some heart problems announced by FDA. So by this example, we can explain. Okay, so if, of course, because they have some off-target and all these molecular targets are related to cardiovascular field. So that's why they may cause some heart problems after if you use this medicine. So this is a very quick example for us to study, a case study to understand how our researchers, scientists, our clients, how they can use the safety screen panel to evaluate the risk of their compounds at a very early stage. So this is the position and inf impact of secondary pharmacology. So according to the result, we suggest if we want to do the safety screening or the, safety, <clears throat> the secondary profiling, we suggest our res researchers to do it as early as possible. Because if you, we find this is a late stage, so that would be very costly. So if the early stage during the screening period already we find there are some potential we we'll know this and we can modify or adjust structure accordingly. And also we suggest to screen the target as wide as possible. So basically we have a 44 very important targets published by the paper. But if we want to be very critical and very strict, we really suggest to screen as much as we can and to exclude all the potential of targets. And later we can suggest so our client to do some dose response curve to identify IC50, because if later on, we, if you like to perform some functional ASA or some mechanism studies, you need this information. And also by our functional ASA follow-up, we can identify the compound if it's an agonist or antagonist on the certain receptors. So we can, they can provide some functional evidence on how it works. And later, of course, uh, our internal scientists or expert in the pharma you should like really interpret the data by your own or by some suggestion from external experts to evaluate if you want to continue this project or how you can adjust to modify your structure to avoid this off target. But um, in this slide, I just like to mention is off target is not only harmful or make some problem. Sometimes this kind of off targets can reveal or open a new window for the projects. So for example, recently we have a lot of theory about multi-target drugs. So maybe before we think the drug is a dirty drug, they have some a lot of off-target. But some research they mentioned about this kind of multi-target, probably they can contribute to the synergistic effect on the different targets and have better therapeutic effects. So this is also worth to pay attention to. And also sometimes even we find some off-target, for example, if our principal project, we want to do some drug discovery and aiming on certain purpose. But maybe this project failed, but we find some off-target. And this off-target can pr pr 
potentially provide another opportunity to revive this project. Maybe, for example, if, if we are working on the dopamine receptors treating Parkinson's disease, but in the end we find off-targeting serotonin transporter. So that's, that's finding could be contribute to another new opportunity, for example, for antidepressant drug discovery. So the more we know, especially on the off-targets, probably we can have more opportunities to and more options for our projects. So not so just like to mention not only for the harmful secondary effects, sometimes the off-target could be beneficial to our studies. Okay, so next one I'm going to the CNS part. So I just like to show you what CNS kind CNS service we can provide regarding the safety pharmacology. So we have a CNS target panel. Actually, we select all the most biological relevant CNS targets into this panel. So if you are studying in CNS, no matter in the therapeutic areas or you want to do CNS off targets, you can think about to start from the CNS target panel because we have a 94 ACEs all included in very important CNS receptors and arm channels. So this will be helpful to your study on like neurodegenerative disease, psychiatric disorders, like or emotional disorders, and also like uh, cognitive problems, Parkinson disease, Alzheimer's disease, and so on. And there are 94 biological relevant targets, including enzyme GPCR, ion channel transporters, and nuclear hormone receptors, including CNS panel. So if uh, our client is focusing on CNS field, sometimes they can start from the CNS panel. And uh, next one, I want to show you the drug abuse safety panel. So this is more specific for drug abuse safety and the safety liability, because a lot of compounds, they have a potential risk of uh, drug abuse. So we already know in the brain circuits, like basal ganglia, nuclear basal nuclear accumbens, amygdala, and free frontal cortex that relate to drug abuse. And the old drug abuse mechanisms that relate to different kinds of classes like opioids, alcohol, nicotine, CNS stimulant, cannabis, <coughs> hallucinogens, inhalants, and BZD and barbiturate related. So they are related to different kinds of mechanisms on different levels and also on different brain circuits and they can potentially cause some drug abuse potential. So during the drug development and discovery, we really need to pay attention if our compound have a risk of drug abuse. So why it is important? Because FD already provide a guideline to assess potential drug abuse. So in the guideline we mentioned about the some specific neurotransmitter pathway like dopamine, serotonin, GABA, opioid, cannabinoids, MNDA, and some ion channels and transporters, they should be related or to include it into drug potential assessment. So they suggest we use a radio like binding assay as starting concentration 10 micromolar to test this uh, potential molecular target if they have a hit. So that's probably indicates a potential drug abuse risk. So further assessment and evaluation should be necessary. And this is the ASA list in drug abuse safety panel. So we include all the related molecular targets for drug abuse, same including enzyme, GPCR, channel, and transporters. And last one for the CNS safety, we like to mention about the seizure liability. So for some compounds, actually they have some proconvulsive effect, especially for the infantile or juvenile. So when you use this compound, they may probably cause some seizure. And this is what we also like to avoid. So for the seizure implication, usually this is related to ion channel. So we list out some relevant ionic channel like calcium channel, GABA receptors, glutamate receptors, potassium channel, sodium channel, and so on, to evaluate if a drug is proconvulsive. And if uh, we have some heat on this, probably that's where we have to think about if we have a pro combustive concerns. And later on, if we have some heat, later on we can also use our in vivo seizure models like we have a 
maximum electrical shock animal models, PTZ induced seizure models or insulin induced seizure models to see if uh, this kind of drug is really proconvulsive. And if clients really would like to understand more how the compounds work on the sonic channels, we can ship your compound to some trial site to perform more delicate electrophysiological assays to know how your compounds work with the ion channels. And next one I would like to mention about the cardiovascular safety or we so-called the CPA. So I think already we remember this figure. So considering about the instance and impacts. So the most important one is the QT per long for cardiovascular safety. So this is a very high instance and high impacts target. And we really need to pay attention for the arrhythmic risk. So the, the main key point is about the Herc channel. So Herc channel is a potassium channel. So if the drug interfere or bind to Herc channel, on the cellular level, they could find, a, especially on the cardiomyocyte, side, they could find a prolong of the action potential. And from the ECG, we can find the prolong of QT wave. So what's happened when QT wave prolong? So we can see clinically, we can see the so-called torsada point, meaning the very severe arrhythmia and can generate a ventricular vibration and cause cardiac arrest and sudden death. So this is very risky and very dangerous. So all the compounds will follow the guidance of FB, FDA, S7B to test if the compound really bind to her, her channel. So we provide two different binding sites for her receptor, her, her channel to evaluate if our compound really bind to her. And to if the compound binds to her, we really need to take consideration about the further cardiovascular risk. And talking about the cardiovascular risk, so sometimes clients they want to know more about the uh, the potential risk because not only the potassium channel, but also sodium channel and calcium channel, they can alter the heart rate or the shape of the action potential of cardiomyocyte. So some clients, they want to be very careful. So they also pick up sodium channel binding assay and calcium channel binding assays to make sure they have no effect on sodium and calcium channel as well. And similarly, if clients, they really want to know how the compounds work with ion channel, we can pass a drug to our US site to perform more delicate electrophysiological tests to understand how the compound really work with the ion channel. And if there's a real really risk of how we can avoid. And the uh, next one, we would like to go through the cardiogenesis safety. So already we know for cardiogenesis study. So it, this is very time consuming and also animal consuming test. So from the current suggestion, we need to take around two years study to perform like 50 to 70 animals per sex with three different dose level, like high, medium and low, and also double control. So for the whole study, several hundreds or even thousands of animals should be used for this cardiogenicity testing. And also a lot of histopathological follow-up analysis is necessary as a golden standard. So this is very time consuming and very costly assays. So recently there are some voice in recent years, some voice thinking about, okay, how we can reduce the use of animal and how we can make some alternative tests by in, vi in vitro methods to accelerate this, this process and also to find out maybe more potential cardiogenesis risk, especially on the four classes is like a genome toxicity, hormone dysregulation, immunosuppression, and chronic toxicity. So a lot of voice already rest and people are looking for some alternative in vitro way to perform this cardiogenesis safety. Of course, so far we don't have a solid conclusion. So animal model is still necessary, but uh, little by little, I think people will shift and think about more how we can address this issue by in vitro assay. So here we just summarize, <clears throat> check the literature and we, we find some key characteristics of a cardio carcinogen, sorry, carcinogen. So there are some potential pathway like metabolic activation, 
genotoxicity and DNA repairment, and also epigenetics, oxidative stress, chronic inflammation, immunosuppression, receptor media effects, and in the end, some cell immortalization and proliferation. So according to the reference, we pick up some assay list related to different areas, different pathways. So like metabolite, metabolic activation, ROS. So we have some free radical scavenger test and we have an inflammatory related pathway. Also apoptosis related pathway, some important GPC and NHR and some GPCR related to cell proliferation. So by this molecular target assay, so it will be help, helpful to our client to identify or to adjust the potential cardiogenicity risk. And in the end, I just like to show you the entire side because type side is very unique. As a CIO, we have a both in vivo and in vitro capabilities. So some clients, they start from in vitro studies and later on they go through the whole process and go to the in vivo test for the animal study. So you can complete all the study in only one side. You don't need to ship your compound and you have the same technical team to help you. Okay, so a, a very often phenomenon or a question we met with our clients is about the safety pharmacology in vivo. And at the beginning, some clients, they finalize their in vitro study. They want to go to the next step, some in vivo study. So they, they don't know the dose they want to uh, apply to the animals. So this is the first study we suggest Kranen to do is the maximum tolerate dose, so so-called MTD. Because sometimes Kranen, they just pick up as dose, but uh, when we apply to the animal, we find animal feel very so uncomfortable, unwell, even <clears throat> in the end, even to a death. So that's where we'll terminate the study. So the first step, we encourage Kranen to do the maximum tolerance test to know how much dose we need to really apply to the animal. And then we can go to the next one, like some functional assay. For, for example, we have some locomotor activities, rotaro test, and also we have a cardi cardiovascular monitoring like QC prolongation in guinea pig. And also we can monitor the respiratory functions, such like a respiration rate, tidal volume, mini volume, and also blood gases. And also in Eurofins type A side, we also provide non-GLP based safety pharmacology and toxicology. So we have some toxicology studies to evaluate the vital clinical size to evaluate some ad adverse effects. So we can take the samples from blood, urine, or some tissue samples. And also we have some custom message for nephrotoxicity and GI side effects. So in the end of uh, this presentation, I just like to remind you in Eurofins, especially in our site, we can provide very distinctive value to our clients. In Taipei site, we have uh, more than 450 biochemical assays, so cover hundreds of uh, potential molecular targets. And also we have more than 220 functional assays. And we have a uh, different technologies like a radiometry, absorbance, absorbance for resistance TR freight. And also we have a confocal based high content image system, flow cytometry, Luminex, QPCR, and we have a very, <clears throat> very delicate cell cultural system. And in recent years also, we introduced the SPR service to further study the binding affinity and kinetics for kinetics compound. And not only for safety pharmacology, we have also therapeutic based services like we have a therapeutic panel, like a NASH panel, T2TN studies, and new degeneration panels for on target profiling assessment. So if current they are looking for a certain therapeutic area, we can also provide relative services. And in the end, not only for small molecule, we have also large molecule services. So for the new biotherapeutics or biologic study. So we have a FC receptor binding assays, we have a C1Q binding, and also we have some immuno oncology targets like PD1 and PD01. So this is newly launched in the past year. So this is the capability from type A side. So just like to remind you, not only the safety pharmacology, but we have a lot of on target profiling. So our staff, we have like more than 
10 years experience and more than 70% of our staff, they have a scientific background and we have a very strict anti-deliver rate. And also we can support different kinds of documentation or regulatory support to our clients. Yeah, so thank you for your attention. So we are looking forward to hearing from you in the coming future.